Welcome back. I've got with me Marcus Hagan, former Hampton High grade, played ball at UVA, and now he's going back to coach at UVA. I think this is wonderful. <laughs> I know you got to be happy and thrilled about it. It's, it's a great experience. Coach London provided me with a great opportunity, and I'm just glad to be back. All right, well, let's go back and talk about going through the, the rec system. What team did you play for? I played for the Aberdeen Raiders, and my head coach was actually Coach Alvis's man, brother, Stan, man. Oh, Stan, yeah, I so, know Stan, yeah. So uh, I started off with him at the Aberdeen Raiders. I was actually too young to play, so they kind of snuck me in anyway. <laughs> so I fell in love with it early, but then one day I found out how hard people can really hit. I finally got thrown in there, and I quit. Oh, wow. I, I went ahead in the closet, and my mom my mom found me hiding <laughs> in the closet. So after after that, um, she was like, that ain't, that ain't the son that I'm raising. You tougher than that, and we're going to be tougher than that. So she sent me back out there, and, and Coach Man, I mean, he, he embraced me with open arms. He said it happens, you know, starting off at a young age. Right. We just got to get you back out there, get, get the training wheels off and get you going. And ever since then, you know, it was just full steam. I led the team to three uh, rec league championships in a row. I had great teammates, but, you know, Coach Man, he, he passed away a couple years ago, but right. he was probably one of my favorite coaches, and he was the one who instilled a lot of things in me that I carried throughout my career. Well, he, he evidently not only showed you how to play a ball, but also give you some uh, uh, lessons in life himself. He definitely did. He, he taught me how to be tough, and he told me to, to go out there and always give it to all. And, you know, we used to always have this saying when we were little kids that Coach Man always made us say, never take no prisons because you can't afford to feed them. So <laughs> that, just, that, that was always our mentality. We always wanted to be tough, go out and force our will on people, and, and don't stop playing until the, the clock ran out. And I think that enabled to put, like, a little a fight in that type of dog in me at, at a young age, and it just carried throughout my career. All right, now, was you always a quarterback, or did you, was you running back? Or when, I, when I first started playing, I was always a quarterback. I had this remarkable ability to be able to throw. But the, the crazy thing before all this is when I was first born, I couldn't use the right side of my body. And the doctor said I would always walk with a limp and, you know, never use the right side of my body. I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. So the, the remarkable turnaround that I had through uh, the faith in my family and, you know, God blessing miracles, you know, it was a miracle that I was able to play within itself. So uh, I just always was gifted with a, with a miraculous arm. Well, but you also got so much quickness about you. And, and as being a quarterback, almost a sixth sense, that you can feel the, the pressure, can't you? I think so. You know, a lot of times you can always, sometimes when you're just walking down the street and you might feel like somebody's following you or walking behind you, you just turn your head and you kind of look back to kind of concur what you're feeling. That's the same thing in the pocket. <laughs> you know they're coming to get you anyway. So right. after about three seconds, you start counting in your head like, man, I got to get out of here. So, <laughs> and luckily, God blessed me with some quickness that I can get out of some situations. All right, now you went to Hampton High mm -hmm. and you're following a great quarterback one of the best yeah so you know you but you go in there and you do it you do the job well i think i think you know having him there first watching how he carried himself how he handled himself with all the pressures that he was dealing with i mean we weren't just talking about somebody who was one of the best players in the state we talk about one of the best players in the country That's at absolutely. the time national press you know espn we even had the high school american basketball game down in hampton high that year so just to watch how he handled himself on a day-to-day -day basis and got rid of all the pressures of everybody caving in and was just able to perform week in and week out was something that I just tried to carry on when I got the opportunity to play. Okay, so when you did get the opportunity to play, now it rests on your shoulders. You didn't back down. I mean, you're not the biggest guy out there, but you got one of the biggest hearts of any guy I've seen play ball. And I think that's something that, that was instilled in me. It's, it's not the size of the dog in the fight. It's the size of fighting the dog. So it doesn't matter how big you are. When you come up to, 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 to step up to play, you just give it your all and never back down from anybody. And I think that's something that was instilled in me at an early age, and it just continued throughout my career. Um, I think Ron helped me out a lot making the transition, coming into a program that was a national powerhouse. Right. So people had got spoiled by everything that he was accomplishing. Like, everybody was expecting Hampton to win every single game. And the first game we played after he left, we lost to Heritage in five overtimes. But I didn't start that game at quarterback. Fonzo Gunner started. That's right. And, and everybody was just saying the program is over. They'll never be the same without Ron. And I was just telling Coach, man, you know, I love Fonzo, but I said, if you just give me one chance, you won't make a mistake. I promise I won't let you down. And he gave me an opportunity to start the next week, and we went through, and we, we had an opportunity to win the state championship that year. Uh, let me say something to you that, that I think is great. And Mike Smith mentioned this. You always had a smile on your face. <laughs> He's, you know, in practice, it didn't make any difference. You were having fun. I think that's, it's a game. You know, at the end of the day, it's a football game. So it, it was always fun to me. I never took it like 
you know, it was life or death. I, I, want, I hated losing more than anything, but the opportunity to work out every day with, with the fellas, you know, guys like Armando Curry, Jared Green, Alfonso Gunner, Hakeem Zarif, you know, Jeremy Southern, those guys, like, really um, ignited fires in me every day just to know that I was having a good time out there being around good people. And, you know, a lot of those guys were so much older than me. So I had to look up to them for leadership. Even though I was the quarterback of the team, I looked to a lot of those guys for leadership because they had been there. They had been invested in the program. And here I was, the young guy just coming in, you know, with a lot of a lot of pressure on my shoulders. But they took the pressure off me, and they made it easy for me to come in and make the transition. And then by my senior year, I was able to step in on my, on my own. Well, this is one thing that, that just blows me away. When you're a senior, you're the same age Ronald Curry was as a sophomore. <laughs> so theoretically, you could have played two more years. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And um, I think that's one thing people don't, don't realize sometimes is I was always, whatever grade I was in, people were still like two years older than me. Like I just always played up. And I think at an early age, I, I skipped the grade because I was a little far advanced. And so it, it always allowed me to play up, but I was always the youngest by always two years. So when I graduated, I think I had just turned 16. Yeah. So once... Once I got the opportunity to be the quarterback at Hampton High as a senior, I was only 15 years old. <laughs> so most people come into high school at 14 or 15. That's so right. I think that helps speed up my, my learning curve and also my maturation process as well. Okay, now when you graduated, you went to Fork Union. And what was that like? Oh, man, it was tough. You know, coming from a school where, you know, everybody knows who you are. You know, everybody supports the games on weekends. There's girls there. To go into an all-boys school, waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> saluting the flag, and then looking up in the stands and nobody's there to come support your game. So it was, a, it was a good transition. It was tough, but it was something that I needed. And like I said, I was only 16. So it gave me that year to kind of really get a senior year. Like when I left, I was, I was turning 17. So right. when I went to college, I had, I had just turned 17. So it gave me the opportunity to get another year underneath my belt and really prepare and, and, and get a foundation to get ready to go, go to college. Right, so you, one more year of maturity. Then you go to UVA. What was that like? It was great. Um, Amanda was already there. Right. Ray Mann was already there. So I had guys that I played with in college that were already on the team. So that helped the transition uh, be a lot more smoother than what it normally may have been if I had went to another school. Right. Um, I knew a lot of people that I had played against in high school. They were there as well. So, you know, just having an opportunity to stay at home because I initially committed to Indiana coming out of high school and I signed my letter of intent. But they tried to prop 48 me. That's why I went to prep school. So being able to stay in my own hometown and have my family be able to come see me play week in and week out and our games be locally televised, that was really important to me when I got the opportunity to, to go back to UVA. Right. All right, now you're at UVA, and then you get drafted. You go to the pros. Now you're talking another step. Everybody's fast, well, and everybody's big. And everybody's getting paid. <laughs> it, it's a livelihood now. It's a way of life. And, you know, coming out of college, I was a quarterback. But I got drafted as a punt returner as a wide receiver. So my last four years of college have been basically every day at quarterback. So now here I am trying to make a transition that wide receiver within the span of three or four months against guys who've been playing defensive back all their all they life. And, you know, one thing I will say about this, and when we went out to Arizona, me and Jimmy Williams had the same agent. And we flew out to Arizona to work out. And he helped my, my progression as a receiver so much because he was one of the DB, one of the best DBs coming out in the draft that year, if not the best. I, I felt he was. And every day he went against me, he just made me better. My first my first couple weeks were kind of rough, you know, just getting used to playing receiver. He would jam me up, beat me up at the line, and it would just get me so frustrated. But it was something that I needed because it helped me to get better. And he's he's one of the best competitors, just like I am. And it's, it's funny now that he's, he's bigger than me, but he was always younger than me, so I always treated him like my little brother. So he was getting the best of me at his position, and it used to frustrate me every day. <laughs> but by, after the fourth week or so, uh, standing out of API, I got it together, and then I was able to win and start running routes. But the transition was definitely tough, but, you know, I got to tip my I had I thank him a lot for that you know being there every every day with me working three or four times a day when he didn't have to just trying to get me better so you know it was it was a great transition and also once I got to St. Louis my first year I had two hall, future Hall of Famers I had Isaac Bruce I had Torrey Holt and then my receivers coach was Henry Yeller who played in the NFL for almost 15 years right. so I was just in the in the in the presence of greatness who was able to make the transition and I learned a lot my first couple of months real fast. Right. Let's talk a little bit about now going to coach up to UVA, your alma mater, with a, a local guy, 
Mike London, talk a little bit about that. Well, I, you know, I always thank Coach London for the opportunity to bring me back. You know, he, he didn't have to, but he sought me out and was like, we need you a part of this program. You know, we need to start you off as a graduate assistant so you get, get your feet wet, and then we'll try to progress you as a coach. But he's like, I got to have you on the staff. And I was like, Coach, if you really want me, I, I'm there for you. And, you know, he's just created an environment where you don't work for Coach London. You work with him. And that's, that's oh, a that's big thing. Yeah. And everybody on the staff feels the same way. And then we have a lot of guys not only on the staff that went to UVA but played at UVA. So you got legends like Sean Moore, Anthony Poindexter, and then a couple of guys that I played with, um, Gordy Samuels and, and Brennan Schmidt, who was a captain with me my senior year. So he has people there that played in the program who are back helping coach in the program. And then we just got a great group of guys that he's put together, local guys like Chip West, and then, you know, rounded out with a lot of guys that are, that are going to be very successful this year and key to us winning um, a lot of games this year. Um, I'm so glad you stopped by. Anytime, man. You, any, any, anything for you. I, I, I'll be more than happy to stop well, by anytime. I appreciate it. We want to thank you for tuning in to LFC and Sports Time. I want to thank all my special guests today. I'm Bob Hintz, your host. Till next time.